Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Depending on where you're watching us from, this is Eros of today's church. And today's show promises to be very, very explosive. Why? Because we are going to be looking at some stupid things pastors do to brainwash their members. Some very silly things they do to brainwash their members. Uh, but before we get into the main gist of today, let's look at events that have happened in the past few days or weeks. First and foremost, I want to start with the good news that Bishop Dr. David Oyedekbo has prayed for his son and uh, commissioned him to start an aspect of ministry that is peculiar to him. You may remember that not too long ago, the social media went haywire saying that uh, Isaac Oyedekbo had broken away from Winner's Chapel. That is not true. We heard him say with his own mouth that uh, he still remains a bona fide member of Living Faith Churches worldwide. So he remains a member of Winner's Chapel. But there's a special aspect of the work that God has commissioned him to do. He wants to start it. And his father prayed for him, anointed him with oil, prayed for his wife, anointed her with oil, and commissioned them to get started. Because like he said, our times are in God's hand. God's time is not in our hands. Hallelujah. That's a good one. A, a more controversial one was what happened in Wari not too long ago. Pastor Jeremiah. He knew that he gave his wife 55 million on her birthday. And people began to ask, where did this money come from? Is it his money? Why is he dispensing it as if it is his money? Is it not church money? After all, the money was brought out from the church, from the office in church, which suggests that the money is from the church. So why would a man give his wife 55 million? Why? And meanwhile, he gifted her publicly. Meanwhile, we know that husband and wife are one. Is he saying that apart from the 55 million, the woman has no stake, no, shape, no, no hold on the ministry or anything concerning him? Why make it even public anyways? What's the point? Well, controversies, controversies, controversies. The answers are neither here nor there. But for us, here in Eros of today's church, we find it a bit uh, sour in, in the taste, a bit uh, uncomfortable. It's not something that we want to recommend for any other minister to do. Now, having said that, let's go to the main gist of today. Some stupid things that pastors do to get their members brainwashed. Number one, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 25, the Bible says, And as Peter was coming to Cornelius, he met him and fell at down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter said no, took him up, saying, Stand up, my brother. We are also a man like you are. We are men like you. We are not supernatural. We are not deities. We are not to be worshipped. The same thing happened in Revelation chapter 19 and chapter 22 when uh, John fell down before the angel and wanted to worship him said see that you do not do this don't try this please don't try it don't do it we are born servants we are people like you are please don't don't try it now the question is why is it that today we have pastors we have bishops we have church, we have archbishops we have apostles who want people to kneel down to talk to them, to bow down to talk to them. Why? Is this scripture? Why don't even if those people volunteered, like Cornelius volunteered, Peter didn't ask him to kneel down. But in trying to volunteer, Peter, uh, Peter stopped him. So why are uh, ministers today not stopping such? Why? 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 That's number one. Number two, we find that uh, a lot of ministers want to demonstrate the power of God. There's nothing wrong with that. We find them, however, using physical power to demonstrate the anointing. It doesn't work. Sometimes the way they position themselves in the name of laying hands of people, they push the person down, push, push, push. Some people begin to spin the person round and round and round and round until the person becomes dizzy and then the person falls. They say, ah, he has fallen under the anointing. Or they push the person down when the person is Sometimes they tell the person, raise your two hands. When you raise your hand, the person will enter into you and push you. 
so that you lose your balance and fall down. All of these are very childish and very human. They have nothing to do with falling down under the anointing. They are not a sign of anointing. No, it's not. I was in a meeting not too long ago and you find that found the man of God using a lot of sweat and strength and power to push people down. And of course we know there are some people who go a step further. They lift the person up and throw him down in the name of deliverance and anointing. These things are human. These things are natural. They are not the divine power of God. They are not the divine power of God. The divine power of God will throw you down without any effort from the minister. You will not need to push you before you, you are slain in the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that will slay you. So how come the, it's human hands that, that now try to slay people? Why? Why? We know. People like Ezekiel fell down under the power. Ezekiel chapter 1, when he saw the glory of God, the Bible said he fell down and worshipped. There are several passages like that. When Paul encountered Jesus on his road to Damascus, he fell down. Nobody pushed him. Nobody pushed him. We are not saying you cannot lay hands on people. No. Laying hands is different from pushing people to fall. Pushing people to lose their balance and fall. That is not laying hands. That is something different. In 1 Timothy, Paul told Timothy, said, lay hands suddenly on no man. But you come into a church and every, everybody in the church lines up and the, person, the minister begins to lay hands on everybody. Really? Really? Is that the way it works? It's not, it doesn't work this way. It does not work. It's not scripture. It's not scripture. Paul said to Timothy, lay hands suddenly on no man. In other words, be sure, be, be definite that this person needs the laying on of hands. We know that when somebody is sick, yes, you can lay hands on the person to, re to receive healing. When somebody is blind, yes, you can lay hands. Ananias laid hands on Paul so that he may receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we know that all there is genuine laying of hands, but there is the human side where people are pushed down. That is contrary to scripture. That is not, that's one of the stupid things pastors do. In the name of demonstrating anointing. Apart from laying hands suddenly on people, we also know that people lay empty hands on empty heads. But we've made that point. Let's move forward. Number three, payment before counseling and prayers. I was in a ministry not too long ago, and uh, they, are building a, they are building a cathedral. That's, that's what they call the building. They call it a cathedral. And so when you want to see the man of God, you have to pay 2000 2000 before you see him for counseling and prayers. And sometimes when you, you come to him, he will sit you down, he will tell you what the problem is with you, and he will tell you, okay, you want to know the solution? You say yes. You say, okay, go and bring five bags of cement and put it there. When you bring it, let me know so that I can tell you the solution. Are we commercializing the gospel? Are we merchandising the gospel? What is all this payment for, anyways? Any man any woman that calls himself a pastor, calls herself a pastor, and demands money for counseling, demands for money for, for, for prayers, is exercising the spirit of Balaam, the spirit of Balaam, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. This is evil. This is demonic. This is unchristian. This has nothing to do with the church of God. We cannot demand money for prayers. We cannot demand money for counseling. It's unscriptural. There is no justification for that by whatever name called. People should be able to access the man of God freely. If they feel like giving, they give. If they are blessed enough, they give. Not that the man of God would make a demand, use his surrogates, his uh, acolytes, and say, you must bring this amount before counseling or before prayers. Why? Why? We do a lot of nonsense in the name of Christianity. May God help us in Jesus' name. No. Is this ministry? No, 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 no. Is this ministry? Is this God? Is this Christianity? Ah, ah, ah. God have mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. Before we sign off for today, um, I'll leave you with a video or two videos. Number one, I saw a video where a man was being clearly and openly rebuked for being a false prophet. 
And I want to ask, is that the right approach? Shouldn't we do this to a lot of ministers who have made prophecies that never came to pass? Watch it and tell me what you think. Number one. Number two, we'll watch a video where Bishop Dr. David Oedipo was sending forth his son into ministry and commissioning him to study peculiar work that God has called him to. I'm sure you'll enjoy the snippets of truth that he showed and showed on his son. Watch and enjoy. God bless you. And it is here that we draw the curtain on today's show. Um, let's see again very soon. Brother, is this the same brother? You're not in the spirit, brother. Sit down. Is that the same one? Brother, listen. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop for a minute. Stop for a minute, my brother. I want to remind you of something. Be quiet. I want to remind you of something. Four years ago, four years ago, on Saturday of the Holy Convocation, you got up and you started your false prophecy like you're doing now. And I asked the presiding bishop, I said, when are you going to stop this man? He said, I'll stop him. And you said if we had the election, all 12 of us were going to drop dead. Let me tell you something. I checked the record two weeks ago. This, this is the only quadrennium since 1968 that not one general board member has died. This is the only quadrennium. You are a false prophet and security, take him out of here. Uh, let me say this to you, my son. His time is not in your hands. Your times are in his hands. Let him move you at his pace. You won't lose your peace. Let him move you at his pace. You won't lose your peace. Be aware of associations that are according to where you are heading for. Beware. I prayed all night for God to separate me from every association that is not going forward. I prayed all night. All night. Disconnect me, I said, Jesus, from everyone going backward. Make my ears deaf to things that do not edify and my eyes blind to things that do not build up. It was Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3 that drove me into that prayer. I don't have a spare life. So I have to jealously regard the only one I have. There's no return match in this game. You blow it, you blow it. Caution. They that walk with the wise shall be wise. A company of fools shall be destroyed. Don't be part of maligning any ministry. That's not a ministry. No. Don't be part of bringing any ministry down. That does not take you up. No. Someone testified in our church years ago. He said, I went to Trem. I wasn't here. I went to Deepa. I wasn't here. My spirit man was grieved. Right. I want to remember. Yes, right. I jump on the platform and say, hey, stop that. The day you believe, the day God healed you. The same God in Trem is the same God here. The same God in Deepa is the same God here. Never get to a point where this thing is only happening with me. There's no such time. Such time won't come. So, that is, I didn't go home to think about it. I jumped up. Right there. Stop that. Same Jesus. Everywhere. Many got healed there. Why do you get healed? You didn't believe. <laughs> Many got delivered there. Why do you get delivered? Didn't believe. I had one of our spiritual daughters who was challenged and he said to me, he dreamt in the night that uh, Pastor Kumi was praying for him. So I called the driver, one of our drivers said, look, I wrote a note. Sir, 
This my daughter said, he's so in the vision praying for her. Please supply me that opportunity and pray for her. Kill and cook her. These upcoming ministers think that they are everything when they have not begun. I'm telling you life stories. Life. We had a job by our church in the New Era Road, and the pastor was going to move away from the ministry where he was. I said, no, if you disconnect without the presence of the house, you are finished. We were together. Only one dwarf roof separates us. No church disturb the other. When you are coming, I tell you, are you going to this church? Move on. Are you coming here? Move here. No crisis, no trouble. What is the problem? This month, I'd prayed for about six people in our ministry that are going into your ministries. Amen. Amen. One of them, about 20 something years in the system. Pray for them and give them material that will help them. Amen. Amen. That will lead this thing. That's what going. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There was a day here we separated about 68 pastors on our WSA platform who have their ministries in Lagos. Most of them. It's a huge field. Can you tell me people that are separating tonight now in this country to the same kind of ministry? They may not know. Praise God. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. So don't bother about those who are saying whatever they are saying. This is one liberal place where you have access to following God's agenda for your life. My mission is to see everybody fulfill God's agenda for his life. Amen. And you will. Amen. I can't give you vision. I didn't give him vision. No. But I can cancel you on how to run with your vision without accident. Amen. How to run with you without accident. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Let the help I've received from your word tonight stay with me. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, as hand is laid on you, I pray to be for unusual grace, yes, for sustainable connectivity. Amen. That, keep you, that will keep you going without sweat. Amen. I pray that impact will be your goal, Amen. not good preaching, Amen. but great impact. Amen. And I pray that your life will interpret your message. Amen. I pray that your life will interpret your message. Amen. I pray that your life will interpret your message. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. As you step into this new phase of your assignment, may you be clothed with humility. Amen. Amen. May you be clothed with humility. Amen. Look up here. I've never begged. Yet I've never lacked. I've never borrowed. Yet I've never lacked. I've never taken advantage of anyone for what he has. 
Someone raised an offering in our church years ago in Kaduna. And I called the people that he was raising offering from. I said, I freed them from it. <laughs> he wasn't raising offering for, them, for himself. He was raising it for us. I said, I free you from it. Told him, I know you. I'm your pastor. This man doesn't know you. <laughs> he doesn't know you. So I free you from it. Forget about the pledge. It's not. Go and relax. And I saw a glow on their faces. In the precious name of Jesus, Amen. you'll never be seen as a burden. Amen. Amen. All through our fellowship days, I never knew what the offering was. It's not important. The source is higher than the offering. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, you will not lose touch with the source. Amen. Amen. Grace to walk in the covenant that keeps you connected to the source yes. of eternal supplies. Yes. Receive it now. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I decree that by this anointing, every trap of the wicked Amen. on your path be destroyed. Amen. And Joshua was full of spirit of wisdom because Moses did this on him. Yes. And people hearkened unto him. Yes. Now be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We have drawn virtue from various sources. Either to may the honor required to keep those virtues flowing. The grace to stay and offer such honor remain yours for life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I know it right now. Fresh grace Amen. to fulfill God's agenda for your life. Amen. Fresh grace. If you go God's agenda for your life, Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone. Amen. Now be blessed. Amen. For witnessing the location, I decree fresh grace for sustainable connectivity Amen. for you. Amen. May you not be trapped by evil thoughts, Amen. evil speaking, Amen. evil actions Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May there be continuous proof of the genuineness of your connectivity. Amen. Not in words only, yes. but in reality. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen.